When we talk about cultivating our collective intelligence, it's important to remember the intelligence we already all share, starting with our incredible brains and the rest of our nervous system. The complex communication system of our brain, together with our spine, stomach, heart, and entire nervous system, equips us with a mind that is extraordinarily capable of working and communicating with each other. Remember, when we say mind, as in mindfulness, we mean this entire sensitive, intelligent, and communicative network. However, when we are suffering from stress, and our minds and bodies are not synchronized, it is much harder to work with and communicate in a helpful way with others. So let's take a minute to look at stress. It's important to understand that stress can be constructive or destructive. Stress can enhance performance and also diminish it. It helps us rise to a challenge and get started by releasing hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. But if we remain in that pumped up state too long, the results are destructive. We no longer function properly and chronic stress makes us ill. We need recovery time. So stress itself is not the problem. Lack of recovery is. The top line shows continuous stress without proper recovery. The bottom line shows short-term stress with deeper periods of recovery. That makes all the difference. As these authors say, the real enemy of high performance is not stress. The problem is the absence of disciplined, intermittent recovery, or intervals of recovery. The world's top athletes understand this. But what about us? Well, our natural ability to recover is so strong that even a short period that breaks the stress cycle is helpful. So let's experiment. Here is something you can do to put this into practice. Try taking regular one-minute breaks. You can do this before switching tasks, before going to a meeting, before making a phone call, before going home, or you can set the timer on your phone for once an hour. Or you can do one minute of mindfulness practice. If you count seven breaths, for most people, that's a minute. Or you can do anything other than your work. Drink some water. Stand up and stretch. Look out the window. Anything that breaks your continuous stress pattern. The best thing of all is to do it together. Whoever is in your office or on your team, you and your boss can do it together. You remind them or they remind you. By doing this, you are taking care of each other. Let's do it together right now. While the minute passes, let me show you a few glimpses of what's out there just beyond your window. Or if you prefer, you can get up and walk around, take a break. See you in one minute.
Welcome back. This brings me to something else we need to do together. It's part of cultivating our collective intelligence. And it's related to what scientists call our social brain. We are deeply social beings. Our brains have grown to four times the size of our ancestors' brains three and a half million years ago. And it's our social capacity for understanding, communicating, and cooperating with each other which has driven this growth. We learn from each other, not just during our early years, but all the time, like right now. And we can cultivate our collective intelligence. This is the leadership of the university in a training session on mindfulness and mindful communication, literally cultivating collective intelligence. Which brings me to this character. It's the Chinese character for listening. On the left is the ideogram for ear. On the right at the top is you. Then eyes. Under that, the horizontal line, one, as in undivided attention, and at the bottom, heart. Ear, you, eyes, one, heart. Listening to each other in this way not only synchronizes our mind, senses, and heart, it also enables us to understand not only what we are saying in words to each other, but the actual meaning of what we are trying to share. That's very different to what most of us are actually doing while we appear to be listening. Instead of giving the person our full, undivided attention so that we can actually understand and learn from them, we are usually busy liking or disliking what they're saying, secretly editing how they are saying it, comparing it to our own experience, judging them, preparing the speech that we're going to make, and then rapidly running out of patience and interrupting them. Hmm, do you um, by any chance uh, recognize any of that pattern? That's very different to ear, you, I, one, heart. The next presentation in this series, Mindful Listening and Learning, will take you through the instructions for a practical experiment you can do to explore this different and deeper way of communicating. It's an experiment in mindful listening and learning that takes about 10 minutes.